candy today. I have beef short ribs. I'm going to do a cabbage, sweet potatoes, and mac and cheese. Um, I'm going to season these up. My seasonings are basic seasoned salt, black pepper, garlic powder for just to get this on the meat and sear it up. Then I'm going to put them in this pan. I got some olive oil in the pan. I'll let those sear up until they get browned. Of course, I'll add a little more olive oil. And then I'm putting them in the crock pot, y'all. But when I put it on the crock pot, all of my ingredients are posted. Um, I will try my best to send ingredients if people ask them. But all you have to do is watch the video because I put everything on the video that I do. I give up all the church's secrets, okay? So right now I'm about to season this meat. These are what I, This is what I'm seasoning it with. That's it. I'm going to rub it in really good, and then I'm going to drop them in the skillet to sear them because when you sear your meat before you put it in the slow cooker, it kind of locks in the flavor, all right? Stay tuned. All right, so my short ribs are lightly seasoned. Nothing major. Um, I'm about to go ahead and drop them in this pan and let them sear. I don't heavily season them at this point, A, because I'm not really big on salt, but um, B, because... I am about to make a, a sauce that I'm going to cook them in primarily while they're in the slow cooker. All right, so um, I'm going to let those sear up and I'll be back. Wash my hands. So they are searing. And look at them. I want mine to be a little more seared before I flip them. I just want like a, a nice little brown. That's not brown enough for me. So I'm gonna let that season darken a little more. So it's just like a little crisp. It is almost like this one. This one is almost good enough. So I'm gonna let those continue to sear a little before I flip them. And then once I flip them, I will show you how I will proceed with the sauce. That is the type of brown that I want. And again, they're not done. I am just browning them so that I can sear that flavor in there and then I'm gonna transfer them into the slow cooker. Um, so while I'm doing this, I will move on to how to make my sauce that I'm gonna put in this pan when I pull these out. So in a separate bowl, I am going to add brown sugar, um, some apple cider vinegar and some Worcestershire sauce and then a little cumin and I'm gonna whip this up really, really well. And, um, the reason for this apple cider vinegar, vinegar is going to tenderize that meat really well. It's going to make it something like a barbecue sauce, um, but not quite a barbecue sauce. So I'm going to whip that up and show you what that looks like in the pan. I'm even going to add some red wine vinegar into this and then I'm going to whisk it up. And once I'm done whisking it, I am going to yeah, add it into the heat and let it um, cook, it, cook into each other a little. So my rib, short rib, is good. I'm gonna transfer it over here to this crock pot. I'm trying not to stack them on top of each other because you want it all to get the same amount of loving. All right, so I got this still hot in the oven. Um, typically I would add some minced garlic, but I don't really want any garlic right now. Uh, I'm just going to take my sauce that I blended and pour it in there and let that boil in a little and then I'm going to pour it all into that, okay? Let me put it in with some of that fat from that uh, beef. That's kind of like a beef broth, which is what I was going for. So, I'm going to try to fit these in the best way I can, where they all can get some of this juice at the bottom. And for that one, it's okay. Uh, I will then cover them and place it on high for about three hours, okay? And then I slice up some onions. You don't have to use red onions. I just like red onions. Um, not a whole lot right now because I'm still going to put this in the oven and bake it once it's to a certain tender state. But um, put some onions over it, cover it. I don't know what type of crock pot you got, but my timer is 
gonna go on three and a half hours. And then I can prep the rest of my food. Cabbage, um, I like to take the whole outer layer off. Some people like to cook with it. I don't necessarily need it. If I had more people, I would probably do a better job of cooking with it, but it tends to be a little tougher. And um, to me, it's dirty. So um, here's what I have after this. I haven't washed this yet. Um, start by cutting it. I got this knife out of Walmart one day. They were selling knives. It's a forever sharp. But this right here is my best friend on any tough surface. Like, So you want to get this part off because you can't eat that. And then after I get that part off, um, I just chop it down in a way. And again, my forever sharp is really good. And then I just chop it through. I don't like real small leaves. I like my leaves to be more leafy. So I try not to break it off too much. Set it in the bowl because I still have to wash it. So I just try to break it up. So for my sweet potatoes, I cut them sailor style because I find it easier to cut it with a knife than with a potato peeler because the skin is so tough. And I just hold it down and I just slice it like that. I get it done real quick. And I hold it downward so it can fall right into the bag. And then when I'm done with them all, I just throw the whole bag in the garbage. So it took me no time to do that. I come over to my chopping board. I grab my forever shot. Slice downward. Not too thick, not too thin. You can slice yours however you like. I like mine to have some thickness, but not too thick. Like this. I drop them in my bowl and get ready to. pork so i have to use turkey bacon um to start my cabbage off with so i'm just going to slice it down in little slices like that and uh tiana left me so i'm back to doing my own recording but i'll do that and then i will show you what i do next so before i put this cabbage on i discovered a great um ingredient on accident me and all of my besties was together and i was cooking for them and uh, I had a sous chef, his name is Martrell, and he accidentally knocked over a bunch of oil <laughs> into my cabbage while it was fresh. Uh, by the way, guys, I triple washed this cabbage because I don't like bugs, spider babies. So remember, it's only because these copper and nonstick stuff, you know, it don't cook right. I'm going to just be honest. It costs all that money and it don't cook right. But then at the same time, it does cook right. So I have all of my ingredients. I'm not putting it all in. I'm gonna save half of that garlic for um, my macaroni and cheese, believe it or not. All of this bacon goes in there. Cause we had a pretty big cabbage, right? And then not it. I'm gonna put um, not all of these onions. Cause I like to feed the onions in as I go, but to get this nice stir fry or not stir fry, but this nice saute in. So I'm gonna let this all cook down until it browns. And when it starts browning, I'm gonna start feeding my cabbage. Some people call it fried cabbage. I call it uh, sauteed because that's what you're doing. You don't put any water in cabbage when you cook it like this. Please, you gotta smother it. That's what it is, it's smothered. If this browns, I'll come back and start adding my cabbage. Um, I got my sweet potatoes already diced. I'll cook these last because, again, these are the quickest things. Cabbage don't take no time. This don't take no time. The macaroni and the short ribs is what take the longest. Um, but we got time because those short ribs have a long time before we complete those. So, can I tell you don't put me on camera? So, this is how you want it to brown. You want those onions to kind of get a little caramelized like that one right there. Yes. So, at this point, I will start to add my cabbage. And I'm going to add the cabbage and season as I go. So Ty wants to help me. She's adding the cabbage. So you cannot, well, you can put it all in at once, but I like to put it in in layers and mix it up and then season on top of the layers. Go ahead and fill the whole bottom up, Ty. All right, so we're almost done with this layer. All right, mix that up for me real quick. So we got a layer in, right? We're gonna drop one of these rings of onions on top of that layer, break it up. Then we're gonna sprinkle some seasoning on there, okay? Cause we ain't did much to it. We got some black pepper. It's gonna start cooking real fast. 
you can actually pick up the bowl and start pouring it in. Because those layers can be a little thicker. Just making my arms hurt. So Let's you quit. <laughs> All right. So that's the second layer. And you don't have to do it like me. Um, that's just how I prefer to do it. Dropping it in layers. And breaking up those onions. If you put too much seasoning in it. Cabbage has its own flavor. You don't want to over season it. These are just the basics. I will throw some um, Italian seasons in here. I'll slice up some more um, peppers and drop them in there. Because I like it to look colorful. We reduce the heat on this because we don't want our cabbage to burn. And you're going to cook it on low because it's going to sweat. That's how you smother it. So I had to kind of come to Chicago every month on my rounds and buy seasonings because, yeah, they didn't have it. Nonetheless, um, I will add a green seasoning. I'm going to chop up some bell peppers. That's basically. So I'm going to let this smother down. I'm going to grab my green season and show y'all what that look like. And uh, I'm going to add that in here. No too. free promo. I'm not on YouTube. So this is my greens. Great green seasoning. I like to add this. I'll do a little bit of um, chopped pepper for Ty. I don't eat spicy food at all. But she does. So I would do a little of that for her. Uh, I'm going to add some basil and oregano. Only because I like um, that. You don't have to. You can omit it. That's pretty much the base of that for right now. As that cooks, I will balance that out with a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar. Because it takes it to a whole nother level. Um, but I'm going to do that when it cooks down. And I add... Um, where's my lid? You wash it in... So my water is boiling from my macaroni. Add me some elbows. In there, I've already added salt. I do salt and water because it breaks up the starch and it stops your pasta from sticking together. Some people do oil in their water. I don't. My mama didn't teach me that. Um, who taught me how to make cabbage? My mama. This is exactly how she made it, but back then she made it with pork. If you eat pork, pork bacon in here is fire. It's the best cabbage that I've ever had that way. I taught myself how to make macaroni and cheese, um, and it was just me stealing recipes from everybody. Um, I taught myself how to make short ribs my way, but um, my brother's, my, my nephew's mom, rest in peace to her, she recently passed away. She put me on to a crock pot. You do not ever want to overcook your pasta. Um... This is ready, so I'm going to take it out. I can't really explain to you when it's ready, but you don't want it to be overcooked. If it's too fluffy, it's overcooked because you got to remember when you're putting it back in the oven, you're cooking. Don't rinse it again because I like to have whatever starch is left for my cheese. So now we're about to make a roux. So in the same pot that I made it in, I'm just going to start this roux. I'm not going to rinse it because, you know, I want it all that, all that, all that. So I'm going to start off with some butter, some olive oil, this garlic that I left out, and I'm going to let that brown a little, okay? Stay tuned. So this is my melted butter with a little bit of um, olive oil. I'm going to go ahead and dump that garlic. Got a little piece of onion in there. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Remember, this is going to cook real quick. And I'm about to whisk this bad boy all the way down until I don't have no lumps, okay? Whisk it, whisk it, whisk it, whisk it, whisk it. All the flour needs to be dissolved. Yes, I need you. It's coming up. Fredo sauce is just a little different because I got flour in here. You really don't want it to get this dark, but it's okay. I was cooking too fast with one hand and my helper was over there doing a TikTok. Talking about Easter coming up, don't be So you're going to let this heavy whipping cream boil with this roux. And let it all blend in because we really want to dissolve every bit of that flour that was in there. So I'm going to whip this. Um, Ty, can you pass me some Parmesan cheese? 
some Parmesan cheese in it. This is cheese number one that we're gonna add to this roux. And just let that boil, okay? Stay tuned. Cream cheese is cheese number two. Black blend that I'm gonna add in there. That's cheese number uh, three and four. Colby and Monterey. Number five. And I'm not doing a whole lot because not only do I add cheese with my roux and blend it in the macaroni, I do a different thing with it. Too. And I don't put as much as smoked gouda in there because smoked gouda is real strong. But it's good. But it's good enough where I don't have to put a whole lot. Teaching or showing or whatever y'all want to call it. I have to do it a different way. Dropped some butter in here. And I'm just going to stir this butter in these noodles really quick. I'm actually going to add these noodles into my um, macaroni and cheese brew that's in the pot. But before I put them in the pot, I want to kind of butter them up. Let start at the egg. So I have an egg that I just cracked and put it in there. So I'm just going to massage this egg all the way around. You're supposed to beat it and whip it up, but I didn't. So now I just have to do a lot of mixing and passing and turning and mixing. But ultimately, I want to get this yolk on some of all of these noodles. Put it in a little at a time. And let my roux just get covered all up. Well, these noodles get covered all in this cheese. So I'm going to move my whisk out the way. That cheese on that whisk looks really good. So I'm gonna move the whisk out the way and I'm gonna just play. So that cheese is everywhere in there, right? Yes. All in. That's with all the roux. And you go ahead and flatten it down. No, it's all my that cut the video short because you were being shady. I want to talk about all my. <laughs> we're gonna top it off with sharp cheddar i don't know what it is about sharp cheddar on the top of macaroni it just makes it taste so good you can try all these other cheeses on top but they don't really melt right they don't Get it really all in there. so we're gonna cover the entire top with Get some, some cheese that melts some real cheese i mean i don't know if anything is real these days but you gotta make the best of it. So I'm, I'm gonna still take some of this gouda and put some of this gouda across the top as well. Again, you don't need a whole lot of gouda. Because it's strong. It's so strong. But it kind of, I don't know, the smoked gouda is really good on macaroni. So I'll just add a little bit of this. Yes, sir. Come on now. And Period. I'm gonna put some foil on top of here. And, and there you go. This. There you go. What's that, Mama? It's What's a piece that? Of oh, yeah. That wasn't finally. Um... So I have the mac in the oven. The cabbage is um, done, and the short ribs are still in the crock pot. So now it's time to do these potatoes. All right. So you do not need water for sweet potatoes. Um, I got them all. Let me turn them off while I'm talking. So you don't need water for sweet potatoes. They produce their own juice. If you are diabetic, don't eat these because I put sugar in them on top of sugar on top of sugar, okay? Uh, for this, we're going to need sugar. I use white sugar and um, brown sugar. Um, I use vanilla extract. I use cinnamon. I use butter. I gotta grab that out the fridge, and I will use a little uh, lemon juice. I'll show you when to add it. And again, these are all of my good secrets. So, so you're gonna top uh, them off with just a little sugar. I don't know where this light is getting bad from. And then you're gonna put a little brown sugar. You just want like to put it across all of them, okay? Nothing major. So that's how that looks. All right. Um, and you'll add. Um, your vanilla that's enough vanilla ain't really that good but it helps with flavoring if you put too much it's not that good put it that way um, then I'll come back with uh, my cinnamon and I will douse cinnamon across it 
Again, cinnamon ain't that good either if you put too much on it. I do not use nutmeg. I just tried to watch my videos and Instagram deleted all the beginning ones. So, sorry y'all. I'll do a YouTube. I have a YouTube by the end of this week. So, this is how much juice, can y'all see it? These sweet potatoes have produced. So, I'm going to stir these up a little and then continue to let them cook in this nice sauce. And then I'm going to show y'all my trick that gives it the best flavor ever. And when you make it, just remember that I taught you it. So you're supposed to let your mac and cheese sit a little so it can form. Ty doesn't like hers formed. She likes hers just like this. Um, short rib is done to perfection. Um, sweet potatoes.